Bill, we're going to talk about an old friend of mine here. And you may not have known this, but Rusty Goodman and I were pretty close at one time. I, I uh, used to play records all night on WSM radio, and he must have been a big country music fan because he would just come up and sit in. I didn't play any Goodman records. I didn't play any gospel records except country gospel. But he would just pull up a chair and chat with us, and uh, we became good friends. I knew him before I knew any of the other Goodmans. But uh, I believe at one time, just before he, his life was over, you had a tribute to him. Yeah. Um, he, he battled cancer for several years, and, uh, and through that process, um, you know, the insurance would only pay so much. And we found out that, uh, that he was suffering pretty much financially. So a group of us got together. I remember the first artist that I called was Amy Grant. And they were called the office, and in five minutes she called back, said, "Sure, I'll help." I suppose we had twenty-five of of the who's who in not only Southern gospel but just in Christian music in general to come to Christ Church to do this benefit. And Rusty was very much loved, and you couldn't even get in the parking lot. The thing was jammed out two hours before, and uh, we and uh, uh, all the funds that night went to Rusty and his wife to help them in this cause. And we got more than enough because people just loved the man. Now, this is the same church where you later did the Joy to the World Christmas video, video. Christmas yeah. special. Great church. Uh, but the people came from all over. In fact, uh, the three channels in Nashville said, don't go out I-65 <laughs> because there's a major traffic jam out there because of the Rusty Goodman benefit. And that night... Um, uh, somebody uh, had a home camera and was taping some of the festivities that went on. And uh, Glory did a wonderful tribute. And after the tribute, they sang the last song they would ever sing together. And you'll have to be patient because the video and the sound is not the greatest, but I think you'll catch the spirit of it. It starts out with the interview of Tanya, his, his daughter, in one of our tapings. Then it goes to Christ Church. But this is a special moment on the video called Old Friends. Okay. Tanya, I never saw your daddy that he didn't say, Bill, let me sing your song. <laughs> and he'd get out his guitar and sing the newest song he'd be working on. What do you think of, think of it? I said, ah, pretty good, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> he probably said, what do you mean pretty good? <laughs> A songwriter has to write, don't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, they do, you have know, to get it out. When you miss him? Oh, yeah, I miss him a lot, yeah. Michael and I were just talking the other night. Uh, you know, it, he always loved to laugh, too. I mean, he would, um, he always found something, you know, to laugh about. Even when we worked those dates that were like Lubbock. <laughs> <laughs> no people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no people. Three. Uh, you know, and Michael and I were talking about something the other day. And, and I said, man, I, I miss Dad so much. And, and Michael said, Sometimes I just get mad at him for going off and leaving us, you know. We, uh, he said, because I miss nudging him and saying, man, you know, the laugh and joy. You weren't done with him yet, right? That's right. We weren't done with him yet. Why do, you, why, why do you remember most when you think about your dad? Um, especially today, it was our, our days like this brought back so much because uh, when all my, all my childhood, my family was traveling. My father was traveling, and I stayed at home with, with my mom and my sister and just went to school. And, and we didn't grow up on the road. But the greatest treat for me was when uh, I would have a holiday from school or, or summer. Dad would say, you want to get on the bus this weekend? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. And uh, when I sat here today... Those voices and those songs. And I can remember, you know, standing in the wings, holding on to Dad's hand, and just um, enjoying that that feeling and that emotion.
into such a world as this, God sends his poets, prophets, troubadours who see what we have missed, who warn us lest we self-destruct, and who fill the songless night with music. They surround our alienation with love's embrace. They burn through the fog of our oblivion with the piercing light of truth, and they sing the dream back into our hearts. They tune our ears to the laughter of children. They raise our sights to lofty aspirations. They help us discriminate between the tinsel and the true. Poets are the contemplatives in the heart of the world. Without them, we would settle into the fatal monotony of our comfort zones and accept the clouded vision of cataract perception. Rusty Goodman is such a poet troubadour. He sees and helps us to see what we might have missed. He notices a grin in an elevator and puts value in a handshake. He reminds the breaking heart that there is promise of the new dawn and points out to us battle-weary soldiers that we're almost home. When we've lost someone we love, Rusty, you've told us of a greater love that we can never lose, a love of our very own. We found ourselves more than once because of you, singing at the top of our lungs. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. And even though we know that for a long time now, you've had leaving on your mind, we're asking you to stay. Because we need, and this sick old world needs, what you are to us. A lover, a visionary, a dreamer, a poet. We need you here to walk with us and sing your pilgrim song. I remember, you know, I remember just, just being a young kid and standing backstage and hearing him sing those beautiful songs. I remember, uh, I remember something stirring in me when I was a kid, you know, that made me love that music too. Made me want to sing, you know. Woo. And her dad would sing one last song with the family. 